Before we get started with today's video, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Guys, I'm pretty sick. I'm pretty sick of people not downloading Opera GX, the world's first browser made just for gamers. In all seriousness, I am quite ill as I'm recording this, so I apologize if I sound like ass. Opera GX is back once again for all of your gaming browser needs. Do you hate your browser taking up precious RAM and memory while you're trying to get sick frags for your epic gamer montage? Worry no more, as Opera GX's GX Control allows you to minimize your browser's usage of these resources, as well as how much bandwidth you use. As a streamer, both of these features come in handy. And speaking of streams, Opera GX has built an integration with Twitch, so you can see when your favorite streamers are live at any time, as well as other programs like Spotify and WhatsApp. If you're apprehensive about switching browsers because of your saved passwords and history, just use the quick transfer tool to bring everything you need over to Opera GX. And for Chrome users, every extension on the Chrome Store is available for download too. It's available for your PC or mobile device, and if you get it on your mobile device, the Flow feature allows you to connect your devices and share images, links, videos, and more. You can also customize Opera GX in a multitude of ways, even to the point of adding custom animated wallpapers. Actually, I think this one might be making me even more sick. Ah, that's better. This one's curing my illness. So go out there and download Opera GX through the link in the description. And now back to the video. Yeah, like the backscatter, all it does is just pigeonhole you into a playstyle. Like the way I'm pigeonholed into being like the bad weapon YouTuber. Welcome to Bad Weapon Academy, where we take a look at the worst weapons, yada yada yada. Look, I knew this day had to come sooner or later, so maybe this is on me. I should have been preparing for it. This script should have been written down ages ago. This video pre-edited, because what the fuck can I even say? When it comes to this weapon, not a whole hell of a lot. Today, we're looking at the backscatter. I've been fucking dreading this weapon. Not for the reasons you might think. No, no, no. Trust me. There are far worse weapons, barely functional weapons, that I have looked at and have yet to look at. But of all the weapons on the series so far, especially primaries, this is one of the most boring. Not boring to use like the gas passer, but boring in its design and boring to talk about. The backscatter is dead simple. Your clip count is cut by two, you have 20% more spread in your cone of pellets, amounting to about 20% lower accuracy, and no random crits, all in exchange for dealing mini crit damage to enemies if you're behind them. And that's it. There's no change in pellet count or damage, no extra mechanic, you just do mini crits from behind. The range of these mini crits is about 500 hammer units, meaning you do normal damage past that range and you can't pepper people with mini crits from across the map. But with the stupid spread on this thing, you wouldn't do much even if the range was infinite. It's almost like a practical demonstration of why random bullet spread on shotguns is a completely redundant mechanic. So yeah, this seems pretty cut and dry. And it is. You're meant to flank with this weapon. And yeah, that's about it. The reason it's bad is because the reward of mini crits on back hits isn't enough to offset both of the meaningful downsides. I'm not taking the lack of random crits into consideration as a meaningful downside. Although, yeah, that can fuck you over in casual. The small clip makes it bad for sustained fights, and the larger spread makes it worse than any other scattergun for even general DM. And at even mid-range combat, you really feel just how punishing it is compared to any other scattergun. Random bullet spread plays a small factor into this in casual servers or other servers where it's turned on, but it does just that. It makes your damage fairly random unless you're right in someone's face. Or rather, their ass. Sometimes it'll make those mid-range shots do more damage. Sometimes it won't. Sometimes it'll make you shit at close range, Sometimes it won't. I mostly got footage on Uncle Topia where RBS isn't an issue, so I was at least able to get fairly consistent footage. It's consistently terrible, but it's consistent. So anyway, it rewards you for being behind enemy lines, and it's bad for direct combat unless you're in kissing distance of their sphincter. So, just flank. But let's talk about that mini crit reward to begin with. I've gotten the same comment so many times that the backscatter isn't all that bad, 
because it can one-shot light classes. And by light classes, all of these comments just mean snipers. Sometimes a spy if you happen to run into him, but any spy you kill is going to be incidental. You're almost never going to be specifically targeting a spy unless they're making a real difference in killing your team. And if that's the case, they're usually going to be using the kunai, meaning they'll die to one shot at base health from any scattergun, or two shots at full health from any scattergun. And if they're using the dead ringer, it makes no difference since you won't be able to kill him with anything. You won't be able to catch up to an enemy scout unless they get slowed down or backpedal into you, or maybe you'll be able to sneak in a quick backshot against them in a DM, but don't count on it. It's not a frequent enough occurrence to justify running this thing constantly. And engineers? Forget about it. You're never going to get behind an engineer. They're always on the back line, like snipers, but they either have their backs against the wall or near a sentry. And you are not a spy, so you can't get around or disable the sentry. Even if you use bonk, all that does is let you cross the sentry's line of sight. It doesn't actually allow you to get behind the engineer safely. The most you can do is bait him into leaving his post to get into a DM, and that's assuming he's alone and his team isn't supporting him. And even then, you'd be better off in that DM with any other scattergun. The only engineer you have a chance of safely getting behind is a more aggressive gunslinger engineer, and even then, the 25 health boost the gunslinger provides puts him over the backscatter's one-shot threshold. Fucking worthless. This means your only real viable one-shot targets are snipers, spies, and medics specifically using the Vitasaw, since the mini crits will do, at most, 141 damage, just barely crossing that health threshold. But hey, if you really, really want to counter a sniper, then this can sometimes work. Boy, I'm sure- I'm so glad I was using the backscatter to flank that man. That made such a difference. Like, like all it did it just fucked with me mentally, you know? It's like, oh, I, I have to get behind him now, but he's, like, moving around. When with any other scattergun, I would have just been like, tap, tap, he's dead. But it's like, I feel the need to get use out of the one upside. Otherwise, it's just like, why am I using this? But if you're at that close of a range where you're able to one-shot the sniper without him being aware of you, surely you'd be able to two-shot him with any other scattergun, right? Hell, even the shortstop can accomplish that much. You're not saving ammo by using this instead of the stock scattergun either, because after two-shotting a sniper, or any other light class for that matter, you'll have the same amount of bullets as you would have on the stock scattergun had you been using the backscatter right out of the gate, while the backscatter itself has three highly inaccurate shots left after the same action at its best. So you're losing out on ammo by being, at best, just as effective as the stock scatter gun, if not worse, as the backscatter is going to be far more punishing for performing the same action. In fact, here's Germa like 46 years ago when this weapon initially came out, saying pretty much the exact same thing. Not turning your back now, are ya? Ooh! I probably would have got that kill anyways if I had just shot him with the regular scatter gun. I didn't even need to make this video because that sums it up perfectly. If every shot you take isn't perfectly taking advantage of the gun's one strength, you're better off using any other primary. Even at its absolute best, it still feels like it's not impactful enough to justify giving up any other scattergun. Unless your team's biggest threat is four snipers standing next to each other, none of which actually hear you shooting, why would you ever bother to use it? Heavies are still three shots unless their health has been drained by the Gru or they're eating the steak sandwich or holding out the warrior spirit. Medics not using the Vitasaur are still two shots. Demos, pyros, soldiers. If you're at the range where the mini crits are making a real difference, then you're already in effective two-shotting range. And with the scattergun, or any other scout primary, you can also do the same action to their face with no downsides. So, yeah, you flank, and that's it. 
A problem with flanking is that by putting yourself on the back line, you're ensuring that the enemies are likely going to be healthier by virtue of them just coming out of spawn or being near a dispenser, health pack, or their medic. This means that situations where you can cross thresholds against enemies who have been at least slightly hurt aren't going to be as common, except maybe against explosive jumping classes in the process of getting to the front lines. And this means you can't be nearly as effective as a punish class since you're just restricted to flanking. Now Scout is already a very powerful flanker, one of the best in the game, so something that increases his effectiveness while flanking sounds great. You can use the winger or the bonk or the atomizer, and that increases your ability to flank even more. But at that point, why not use one of the guns that can further increase your mobility, like the Force of Nature or the Soda Popper? Even against snipers, who I assume you're trying to counter if you're using this thing because what the fuck else is it good for, they will fold just as easily to either of these weapons. I know the narrative going around right now is that sniper players are basically robots who can react to stimuli within hundredths of a second. They can't. If you just pop a sniper with two force of nature or soda popper shots, or even using the fucking shortstop, if you're in the same situation where the backscatter would have one shot him, he's going to die regardless. So you still get to flank and counter those snipers while also not losing out on your DM and mid range capabilities while also having primaries that assist you in those same flanking capabilities with the extra movement they offer. And if you're still dead set on those mini crits, use the fan of war. Unless you're a rap assassin enthusiast, like me, you sacrifice basically nothing and you swap right back to your not garbage primary for the same stupid high mini crit damage. Or hell, use the criticola if you really feel like it. The point I'm trying to get across here is that there's no good reason to use the backscatter. It's a redundant weapon because everything it does can easily be replicated by the rest of Scout's kit without needing to sacrifice the effectiveness of your main source of damage, or in the most dramatic cases, even increasing it. Hell, even the Babyface's Blaster and Shortstop, I would argue are substantially more impactful and fun to use. They just have very high skill ceilings that aren't worth the returns to a lot of players with more punishing downsides. But good scouts with these weapons can be infuriating to fight. I would rather run either of those weapons in the backscatter any day of the week. And here's the thing, it's not exactly like it's acting like training wheels. Certain weapons like the Candy Cane or even the Sandman to an extent have a tough love approach to teaching you how to play by punishing you harshly for screwing up your movements. But the backscatter doesn't teach you to get better at flanking the way the candy cane teaches you to get better at dodging explosives. It just forces you into that role. But it's usable and functional. It's not barely usable like the Pompson or the Bison, it's not worthless like the Gas Passer, and it's not buggy and inconsistent like the Kaber. You can still do decent damage with this thing. You can still clean up injured enemies who are retreating, and you can still go on some sick kill streaks. But in the situations where you do those things, it's never going to be better than any other scattergun option. The only time I'm pretty sure this wasn't the case for me was in this tournament I was in. 6v6, all scouts. And in one round I used the backscatter as a meme because we were getting trashed anyway, and I managed to get behind the enemy and with one shot kill two low health scouts and I wish I had the clip of that match saved somewhere. But yeah, if you find yourself in those very specific situations often, then the backscatter might just be for you. But in any other case, no. Maybe you just really like flanking. And that brings me to my next problem. You. Yeah, you. The ones watching this video. I have had the backscatter requested so passionately, so many times, by so many different people, and I'm asking you seriously, what the hell did you expect from me? Did you think I'd just be able to pull some secret, unknown, giant brain strategy out of my ass? No, this weapon is incredibly simple. You just flank. That's all you can do. If you try anything else, you just get needlessly punished for it. It's not that the weapon encourages a certain playstyle, it's that it pigeonholes you into it if you want to pretend to be as effective as stock or any other option. The reason I have been dreading making this episode is because this weapon is just so fucking dull, but at the same time, 
I feel like there's a lot riding on it because so many people want to see it. You think that poll I posted was just so I could get an idea of what to do next? No. I started writing this script 20 minutes after I posted the poll because I knew it was going to win. People want to see this video more than the fucking Sandman. Like really? You guys don't want to know how to use this piece of shit? Hell, I make this series and I'd love to know how to use it. But instead, we've got to talk about the backscatter and it's like, you just flank. That's it. There's nothing else to it. Even in MVM, it felt like a lateral move at best. Giants are the thing you would theoretically be the best against, but you should be using the Fan of War or even the Sandman to give you and your entire team mini crits against a giant, not just yourself with your scatter gun that you need to spend precious resistance money on to get even on par with stock doing the same thing, while also screwing yourself out of the extra mobility that the Force of Nature and Soda Popper offer you that lets you get that money easier. In that aspect, it feels a lot like using the Cleaner's Carbine over the Jurati, and I don't need to tell you that's a stupid idea. Well, it must be interesting to talk about how to fix it, right? No! Just get rid of one of the two downsides and it's at least serviceable. Either one works, I really don't care. Is it better for sustained fights but worse at range? Or is it better for picking off those farther away retreating enemies just at the edge of your mini crit range? It would still be boring, but at least it wouldn't be garbage. I can't even think of a way to totally rework it. It's called the backscatter. Flanking is clearly in its blood, and I just can't think of any way to make that more interesting. This weapon is so frustrating to talk about because it's almost decent, but overall it's just boring and pointless even at its best. The positive impact it has on gameplay is so minimal that I think the only reason people like it is because the mini crit sound and the slightly bigger numbers gives their brains that tiniest dopamine rush. I'm sorry that this episode was more meta than usual, but I blame the weapon. It doesn't give me enough to talk about, I really just ended up repeating myself a lot. Well, for now, go out there and flank some snipers and that's it. Don't tell anyone it was me, I'm not taking responsibility for this one. Holy fucking shit, dude. I don't even know what just happened there. That, apparently that wasn't behind him. I'm a fucking god gamer. And I used the opportunity to flank and kill the medic. <laughs> 